I, I do get Aban Bispazane hitting on me mm. most most of the time. They're yeah. like, yeah, what's up, yo? I can be the second <laughs> wife. I'm like, no, sorry, I don't do his table. They're like, mm. okay, I can be the side. I'm like, no, I don't do side dicks. <laughs> yeah. so, you know, dishes either. Yeah. But it's 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 those things. They happen all the time. Yeah. You know, they happen all the time. So, yeah, uh, you just have to tie the lever and talk. You have to tie the lever. Welcome to the Safe Space Chats podcast with Madam Speaker. My name is Perseverance Maremeni, also known as Madam Speaker, also known as the CEO of Self Love. We are not going alone today. We are going with our beloved, beloved guys. I am such a fan. Please don't judge me. If I'm going to be giving groupy vibes, just bear with me because I absolutely love our guest for today. Not that I don't love all our other guests, but trust me, you're going to love him at the end of this. Hi, my brother. Ah, Madam Speaker. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm alright. Thanks for asking. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank I, you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of yours as well. Really? Turns out my wife follows you as well. So yeah. It's a groupy thing. It's a groupy thing. <laughs> I know. I have no doubt that we're gonna really take this and run with it. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you so much for agreeing to come join me today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's such an honor. Uh, please do introduce yourself for those who don't know who Temba is. <sighs> right. Short introduction along. Make it uh, maybe five minutes. <laughs> right. So my name is Temba Tom Nduli. I'm probably one of the few guys that loves using their second name as well for a number of reasons. But I'm Temba Tom Nduli. I, first of all, I love God with all of my heart. Um, secondly, I'm married to an amazing soul. Um, um, yeah, she's, a, she's an amazing woman. And together we're blessed with a baby girl. She's two years of age. Split yeah. copy of me. Sure. Uh, photocopy, photocopy, I tell you. Mm. Um, I, I love God. I love family. I love love. Um, yeah, I, I grew up, come from a, quite a disadvantaged background. You know, grew up in Bumalanga, in Mittelberg, township called Mkluzi. I grew up Gakoko, but mm. I was raised by two beautiful and loving parents. Um, sadly, my loving father passed away about 11 years ago. Um, but I still have my prayerful and loving mom, you know, mm. who's alive. And I'm the firstborn of the three boys in the house, um, the eldest. So I'm a deputy parent, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes yeah. I, I got my fair share of training as a deputy parent before yeah. I became a father myself. Mm. Um, yeah, what else? Professionally, I am a public health specialist, uh, background in clinical medicine, and then went into doing postgraduate studies and um, specialize in public health. I'm currently working in corporate in corporate medicine mm -hmm. um, as a public health specialist slash a business developer in the medical technology space. Yeah. And um, now I actually I'm also a relationship and a leadership consultant sure. because I love family and I love love. So yeah, yeah that's me in a nutshell. We actually met recently doing a, an interview for SABC One, right? And you were the expert. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to bring the expert in. Oh, no, you far too kind. I mean, you you, you had it on. You, uh, yeah, you were on top of it. But yeah, we met at uh, the SAP studios. And it was beautiful, it was beautiful space. Yeah. Um, and, and it's amazing how actually God orchestrates things and make things happen. Because, yeah. um, I mean, when you, when we met, I was just, you know, it's just fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> At an amazing time in the studio. And she, here we are. Yeah, uh, here, here we, are. we are. So what made you fall in love with, um, specifically, we're just going to focus on you, the, the relationship uh, side and you just helping people. What made you fall in love with that? Look, I think a larger part of it is because I was raised by loving parents. Let me speak about my mom. Oh, let me speak about my dad. Mm. Raised by an amazing father. Ah, mm. I tell you, Madam Speaker, sh he, he was, he was the one, mm. <laughs> you know? Um, so I grew up quite poor for a lack of a better word, but, um, raised in love. Mm. I was raised up, um, grew up in a family full of love. My father was, was loving loud, you mm. know, um, we were boys in the house and he would look at us and say, I love you guys. I would hug us. He would kiss us, you know, and public display of affection was a thing in our house. Mm. Right. So I grew up in that kind of a space. I, I knew love in, in that, you know, in that, in that, in that, instance and 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 i grew up with that kind of a thing and mm. when i um went to medical school and i went did my postgraduate studies in public health i realized that family and relationship and love is everything that is actually connected 
And um, that's where the intersection between public health and, and relationships and families is. Mm. Um, so I actually really grew fond of that. You know, uh, I grew fond of that space because I realized that for us to actually heal, um, you know, people and heal the, the community, we actually really need to focus on families. Yeah. And for us to focus on families, we actually really need to look into issues of love and mm. relationships because we've got a lot of broken families. Mm. Uh, and that's the truth of the matter. And the reason why we have so much issues, Zama drugs and teenage mm. pregnancy, and this, that, and the other, uh, it's simply because our families are not okay. So that's what actually drew me to that space. And the fact that I'm actually a born again Christian sure. and I love God. So mm. um, that's sort of like, uh, sort of like cemented everything. So I, I grew into that space um, and, and it's sort of like a calling at this point because mm. God is like calling you in that space. You, we are raised in love. That has ministry on its own. The yeah. seed was planted and it's germinating now. And it's, I think it's about time for people to actually eat from that fruit. Yeah. Oh, that is amazing. You really are doing the work of God, by the way. I really, really have to say that. Um, is it something that is across the board, I mean, with with your siblings as well? Do you guys, because obviously I, I'm, I'm the black sheep of the family. You know what I mean? <laughs> so just because we're raised by the same parents, yes. you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're all going to turn out the same way. Yes. How is it like with the three of you? It's 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 fascinating because um, my, my parents raised hopeless romantics. Mm. Uh, I look at my younger brother's, they are, we, yeah, no, you, you, you can tell that we were raised by, <laughs> you know, the same parents because they, they are hopeless romantics, mm. very smart, um, even if I have to say so myself, um, very intelligent, but mm. also loving and caring. Sure. And I see how they, I, I said this at some point to my wife that um, if, if God can take me now, I would not really be worried about my daughter because, mm. you know, she has Abu Babu Mani, mm. my brothers who are actually loving and caring. They are an extension of who I am. In fact, we all are an extension of who dad was. Sure. Um, and, and we know we'd sit sometimes and talk about love, especially when Um Jolo is showing them flames because sure. I'm not yet married. I'm the only one who's married. Yeah. And they would say, you know, they blame our parents for raising us in love because sure. we believe so much in this fairy tale notion of Utando. Yeah. So much that, that they get their hearts broken there and there outside because mm. they're so much into this thing. So it, it cuts across. It's, it's quite an interesting one because yeah. you see them falling in love and being hopeless romantics and mm. being lovers and uh, being caring and, and sensitive and they, they, they are easy to love as well. You know, mm. it's easy for them to call me and say, Puti, we love you, sure. uh, you know, and, and we hug each other in public and this, that, and the other. So yeah, it's, a, it's quite a fascinating one. You know, I think um, when you are raised in a manner that you were raised, mm. some other people will, will look at you and like, yo, this one, I, I know. So people will, can really take advantage of you, you know, mm. unless or until you find the one that yes. really understands what you are putting on the table mm. and she takes it and she runs with it. Mm. Would you say that before you met the one? Because I know I've been following <laughs> you for some time. <laughs> Were you ever unlucky in love? <laughs> well, let, me, let, me, let me try and think about it. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, I, I have met uh, um, amazing women in the past yeah. who, whom you know, we're not compatible. Mm. Um, I wouldn't really call it... Uh, I think when, when I first fall in, fell in love, mm. my first time I actually really liked, loved a girl and I pursued a relationship. Yeah, that did not go so well. I, mm. I had my heart broken <laughs> into many pieces and sure. I live to tell the tale. Yeah. <laughs> Years later, I still tell the tale because, yeah, yeah, that girl broke my heart. Mm. Um, so that was the only instance. And I think I, I needed that mm. so that I can I can learn from that. And and I can I can tell the story and there's certain lessons because I, God is an artist and God has a sense of humor. There's certain mm. things that you would never, um, you know, talk about in life unless you sure. go through them. Yeah, you know, and 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 Ungulungulu would not want you to talk about Jordan if you have not passed through River Jordan. True. How how are you gonna talk about River Jordan? Yeah. So I had my fair share of River Jordan in case in in the sense of Umjolo mm. showing me flames back then, but it was back in the days. Yeah. and I think from that then I I was I was blessed enough to actually date good women, uh, although we were not compatible. Yeah. And and God blessed me with the best woman ever. I yeah. My wife is the one, Shem. Hey, trust me. I'm so sad that you couldn't come with your <laughs> wife because I was really hoping that you would come with her. She 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 was also hoping to be here yeah. as well. Um, but yeah, she had other conflicting commitments. Uh, next time. Ne? Ne. Next please, time. next time. When, you, when your <laughs> podcast is up and running, please invite me. I would love to sit just in between you and her. Or just on the side, you know, because uh, I feel like, listen, um, you're really doing the Lord's work out there. Um, for those who don't know, ne, there's actually, you know, I actually saw a, a post 
that you posted a couple of years ago, it is still being shared even today when you slid into your wife's DMs so many years ago and then now you guys are married so many years later. And it's still an inspirational thing. Doesn't that put pressure on your relationship? You know, social media, mm. ne, uh, Madam Speaker, it's, 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 I've got a very funny uh, love-hate relationship with sure. social media because sure. the post you're referring to, I saw it the other day, it's also still trending and still mm. like commenting to it. Mm. And some people are just making, doing funny things and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm like, I shared this years ago. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's a lesson I've learned then, that to say social media never, actually the, 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 the internet never forgets. Yeah. So one has to be really very much careful of what they do. Um, and to answer your question, ish, yeah, it's it's been a challenging one. I, I was saying to a friend of mine, I was saying to also my wife, mm. to say how how I wish there could be a way of you know sending out a message without people focusing on the messenger. Sure. But unfortunately, with social media, people take both. In fact, yeah. they consume more the messenger than the message itself, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we have had our fair share of you know eyes on our relationship. Yeah. Fun fact, uh, my wife is quite a shyish person. Mm -hmm. I'm also having my, my fair share of being shy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very interesting fact because I'm so much loud and confident yeah. and people you know, see me on social media spaces. Yeah. But when you meet me in person, I've got that element of being shy. Yeah. Right? So one of the things that uh, has, has happened over the years is, is we have learned to sort of like grow a bit of a thick skin. Okay. Yeah, uh, because social media obviously portrays this fairy tale thingy um, of, of, of Utando. Mm -hmm. But we try by all means to keep it as real as possible sure. so that people can know that it's not that we don't have our own issues and fights. Mm -hmm. We do, but we sort of like have learned by God's grace to handle mm -hmm. them better, you know. Um, and, and, and the pressure has come in the early days, you know, sure. to, to sort of like want to put up a facade yeah. and always want to be happy and this 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 beautiful couple in, mm -hmm. in public and always want to sound intelligent and sound like you know it all. Yeah. But over the years, we've learned to say, ah, ah Mara, let's, let's just really be ourselves. Yeah. You know, but one of the things we're struggling with um, even now it's this attention that we sort yeah. of like are getting. Yeah. We, yeah, we, there's, there's been instances where we opt not to go to a certain event because we're like, hey, there's going to be too many people. Yeah. Yeah, my wife is like, ah, I'm like, okay, let's, let's just chill. Uh, we're not there yet. I mean, yeah. we're not like celebrities and you, stuff, trust but me, we you feel are. it. <laughs> <laughs> but we feel it. I'm like, yo, yeah. I wonder how to, Abu, Abu made a mistake do it <laughs> with so many, with so much following. I, I yo, can't. <laughs> I've developed social anxiety. Um, Strange, eh? Yeah. Because yeah. imagine you are loud, you are this outspoken person, but when you step into a public space, all of a sudden, it, you, you don't know what to do with yourself. It's a strange thing. It is. You know, I think it comes, it's the price we have to pay, I guess, for, for being public people. And here was I thinking that I'm, there's something wrong with me. Because mm. honestly, you, I mean, give me a small enough space, I'll mm. be just be happiest and whatever. But I think in, the, in a larger group of people, social events and stuff, I have a bit of that social yeah. anxiety creeping in. You understand? Yeah. Um, uh, especially if the, there could be one or two people coming, you know, to say, hi, Ninja, mm. we love you, we follow you guys. I already, I'm like, okay, if there's two people, I wonder how many other people are here. <laughs> yeah. So let's just really do this and leave. Uh, bit of social anxiety, I, it's, it's kind of strange yeah. one for me. But do you sometimes appreciate the love that you get from people? I mean, I was like, Yay, Mr. Nduli, the first time I saw you there at the SAPC studio, and I was so excited, uh, and I was wondering, where is your wife, where is your wife? Mm. Do you, do we, I, how does it feel? Is it always, does it always make you nervous, or sometimes you appreciate, does it really reflect on the work that you're doing for God? It's a, it's a bit of both. Mm. Uh, it, it's humbling, yeah. and I must say it. Sure. It's strange that the more we get people showering us with love, the more humble we are. Sure. It's, it's, it's quite a humbling experience mm. altogether, because we... Honestly, we don't walk around expecting someone to greet us a stranger to say, I love your work. Mm. And when it happens, it always hits us by surprise. Yeah. My wife and I always look at each other like, okay, all right, cool. Sure. You know, <laughs> yeah. um, it, it's humbling. And at the same time, it's comforting. Because mm -hmm. I cannot tell you how many times I felt like, as in, I don't want to be in this public health mm -hmm. or, or public speaking space. You know, sure. uh, there's been a number of times when I just want to deactivate my social media app, sure. you know, you know, platforms because I feel like it's getting too much this mm -hmm. day and the other. Um, so when you hear people come through and you know they say to you, "Bon, I mean, we love what you're doing," and especially Amajida, that's mm -hmm. quite humbling. Mm -hmm. It's one thing for women to come and say we love what you're doing because you know women mostly are quite emotional yeah. and they, oh, they love love yeah. things. Things. But for Amajida, who are quite, 
you know, hard and you, they are not easily, you know, phased. I'm a yeah. For them to come through and say, Khrotmani, we love what you're doing with your wife. We wish we can do the same thing. That to me, mm-hmm. that to me is humbling. Mm-hmm. And that's probably one of the reasons why I keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, there's been times when I'm like, I just want to take a break from a TikTok especially. Mm-hmm. And w- one of my mentors said to me, you can't. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of guys that are looking up to you, that are following you, yeah. that are consuming the, the content and you're healing. And I'm telling you, it's people across, you know, you know, our social statuses yeah. and all of that. Yeah. Some are even older than me. I have, I've had sessions with 45, 50 year olds saying, please advise me how to love my wife better. Whew. It's an humbling experience. I'm like, mm. nobody did this but God. It, yeah. can, it can only be unkulungkul. It's not my qualifications or whatever yeah. the case might be. Yeah, it can only be God, definitely. Mm. Um, haven't you ever gotten to a point where... Because for me, I, I, I really believe that what we do really is related yes. in a way. Um, have you ever had somebody coming to you and saying, I wanted to take my life, but because I came across your video or something like that, something so... One of the one of the most humbling experiences, and that mm. is before social media was such a popular thing. Mm. It was back in the days. Mm. Okay, um, it's probably I would I would tell this tale until I die. Mm. Um, then back in the days, and I think that's one of the the moments that really said to me, "This is it. God has given you this. Run with it." Mm. I. I was I was I was on local radio station back home and I was I was preaching. Mm. Um, I was not even motivating or anything. I was just preaching mm. um, on radio and and we received a call. Uh, one of the listeners called and said, "Listen, an old like an oldish matured man says, mm. listen, I'm listening to you preach right now and um, I'm touched because I was actually really thinking I'm gonna end my life today sure. and I'm not gonna do that. You mm. know, um, I lost that recording." Because sure. uh, the radio station gave me that recording. But I remember playing it in Varsity. One mm-hmm. of my friends listened to it and said to me, um, I would never, he said to me, this is the biggest thing that you've ever done in your life. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you can retire now, you know. Yeah. So I've had a fair share of that back in the days. Uh, and I'm having a fair share of that even now, you know, yeah. when people say, um, especially when it comes to relationships, um, you know, I was ready to give up on this relationship thing mm-hmm. or my marriage. But, you know, I've, li- I've been listening to your videos. I've been following you and I love your advices and I'm ready to give it a shot, you know, mm-hmm. and that is humbling. And I think um, that is what led to me opening up to giving sessions to people sure. and giving. That's why then I decided to call myself a relationship consultant mm-hmm. because then people can consult, mm-hmm. you know, um, whenever they've got relationship problems. Um, it's, 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 it's that. So I've heard a fair share of um, either I was really despondent in life, I was really discouraged, I wanted to take my life mm-hmm. or wanted to give up. But I listened to your video, I saw you speaking somewhere and, and, and I'm like, I'm just going to give it a try one more time. And mm-hmm. that to me is, is worth than anything else. Mm-hmm. Well, it's worth than the fame. Like forget who was saying whatever that I was sure. saying. Forget me, forget the name, you know, mm-hmm. it is Temba Nduli that said that. Mm-hmm. The fact that I said it and then you received it and then it kept you alive, mm-hmm. that to me is more than anything else. Sure, sure. That it's is a humbling amazing. experience. Mm, it is. It is. It really feels like you, you're living a life that has purpose because then if you're waking up and you're doing something like this and it's fulfilling for you and you know that you saved a life, you saved a relationship, you go to sleep knowing that, listen, I've done my part for today, you know? Look, it's, it's, it's the most fulfilling. There was a time in my life where I, I really thought that I get my joy is linked with clinical work, seeing sure. patients and a stethoscope and saving lives in, mm. a, in, a, in a clinical setting. Mm. Um, and I, I never thought that I was going to be happy outside that space. So I pivoted from working in the public space to the private space to now working in, 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 in corporate, mm. right? And now in corporate, you're doing most business talks and you're in offices and you're drinking coffee and you're in mm. boardrooms and stuff like that. I'm not saving lives as like the typical person that I thought I would save life. Sure. Um, you know, and, and running around hospitals and doing resources and stuff. Mm. But I'm, I'm doing what God has called me to do now, you know, which is talking yeah. um, and, and, and ministering to people sure. in a different way. Um, and one of the greatest, I think, gifts that God has, has graced me with is the ability to simplify very complex, yeah. you know, concepts to people. I've seen it when I was still in practice. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing it now, you know, where you talk to people and you make something that is quite complex in their minds, Mm -hmm. quite very simple. You break it down nicely. It's easy for them to actually relate to it and it's changing their lives. Mm -hmm. So I've realized that it's it's a calling. Um, That is why 
the the fame or whatever that might come after that i it's not it's not of interest to me yeah and i think that's probably why it's causing us to have anxiety yeah because we don't expect that we yes. don't i mean you don't you just want to do what god has called you to exactly. do exactly but unfortunately it's calling a metro it's calling attention to you and people want to consume both the message and mm -hmm. the messenger uh that, that's the unfortunate part but it's 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 fulfilling yeah, it is fulfilling, right? Mm. I think with me, the one thing that makes me to be so anxious is the fact that when I step into a place, right, there are people who, because sometimes I do very funny content, you know, I'm dancing and I, I don't know how to dance. So they'll approach me with that angle, you okay. know, where it's just fun. And sometimes I bump into people who are really going through it and they just break down. So I step out not knowing the type oh. of people that I'm going to bump, bump into. You get what I mean? So mm. that's what actually makes me to be anxious. But at the end of the day, whenever I bump into people, when I go back home, I say, God, I thank you for keeping me so that I can really, you know, touch lives in a way that only you understand and you have sent me to do that. Um, I know that in most cases, we women, you, we are the ones who don't want to let go of relationships, mm. you know, especially as yeah, that's alone. That's alone. <laughs> hey, that's <a> lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's my signature, baby. Yeah, I know, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so we are really, you know, we believe that even when we see that the treatment is really, really not yes. good, um, we want to pray about it, we want to fast about it, we want to hold on to it. Haven't you ever been in a situation where somebody comes to you and wants you to convince the person that they're with to really make it work or something like that? Look, uh, if I can show you my DMs, you'd be shocked. Mm. Uh, I think on a daily basis, I do get, uh, especially uh, women. It's, mm. it's a strange thing for me. I, I don't know whether it's because of and, mm. uh, and one thing I can tell you about guys, guys will always choose themselves. Sure. Men will always love themselves. Mm. Men, men put themselves first, sure. you know. Um, in a situation that they, when they have to choose between, they would choose themselves. Mm. And, and that's, that's, that's where uh, the difference is between them and women. Mm. For for some reason, most women would want to fight and stuff. I have heard a number of times women saying to me, I'm in a relationship or I'm married to this man. This man is abusive. This man has cheated on me. Listen, the minute you, you mention abuse and cheating mm -hmm. to me, you sure. know, forget that I'm going to give you something about Begazela, pray mm -hmm. about it, fast and pray. No, you just fast, fast and pray for your healing and, and leave. You sure. know, um, I, I shy away from saying to people, do this and do that. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to abuse mm -hmm. and, and cheating, because I really think, honestly, mm. cheating is not a mistake. You don't stumble and fall into cheating. True. You don't look, I was lewd into it. No, you don't, <laughs> yeah. you don't just fall into, mm. into cheating. You, you premeditate it. You think about it. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you plan it. And you make a choice to actually cheat, right? Yeah. So I've heard a number of women saying, yeah, but this husband or this man is cheating on me. I don't know what to do. And the, always, the, the, the part that really kills me when they say, I love him so much. I'm mm. like, okay, yeah, it's okay. I love him, but from a distance, you sure. know? Um, and that, that is always my, the only time when I'm very much prescriptive mm -hmm. when it comes to giving an advice in relationships mm -hmm. is when you mention to me that this person that you with abuses you, whether it's verbal, whether mm -hmm. it's physical, whether it's emotional, financial, or worse when you mention to me that they're actually cheating on you. Mm -hmm. If you're saying to me they're cheating on you, it means they've made a decision not to be with you. Yeah. So I would tell you straight to say, ah, there's nothing here. Um, there's a lady who is like me who advises people the same way that you do, right? Mm. Obviously, when it comes from somebody like me, it'll be like, oh, bitter divorcee, you want people to be miserable like Hey, Maria, you. going through the most. <laughs> uh, Madam Speaker. <laughs> How are you doing, by the way? <laughs> hey, I know, no, 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 me, I'm good. Uh, I'm it? good, but then, uh, you know, um, no, things are happening out there. Oh, people man. are really mean, you know, um, so. People are mean. People are mean. So I think I saw a video of yours where you were talking about cheating and everything. Yes. Why, why, didn't that qualify you to be cancelled? Because not everybody likes being told or the honesty when it comes to cheating. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm still waiting for a moment where I'm really just really gonna. People would say, "Let's cancel this guy." Mm. You know, um, this before when I came here, a friend of mine uh, shared a, a a a link on on TikTok on Twitter. Mm. <laughs> Let me just say this: Twitter scares me. Those streets are rough. Same. <laughs> uh, look, look, those, those streets, because people just like, people are just out there to kill. They, yeah. they are violent yeah. on those streets. Well, unprovoked. N uh, n you don't have to provoke them. Yeah. Unprovoked 
Uh, Jay, on a random Tuesday, mm. they decide, let's be violent today. Mm. They wake up and choose war. You understand? A yeah. friend of mine shares a, a link on, on, on Twitter. Someone shared my video talking about, um, I think it was on um, how, you know, we need to be careful about sex because sex destroys a lot of men and stuff like that mm. and sexual urges and stuff. Yeah. And I see it's really ga gaining, you know, uh, traction and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so those are some of the things that I, I think, you know, they actually really qualify me. And I see people fetching me, especially Especially mm. women on some, oh yeah. Now much eater, they're like, oh no, don't tell us how to handle our sexual urges, this, that, and mm. the other. Some people are like, yeah, but it's not only men, it's 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 women that's supposed to control their sexual urges. Mm. I'm like, I I'm just gonna sit here and wait and see how far this is, is going to go, yeah. you know. So um you sort of like my wife, as as my wife likes saying to say, you must tie the lever. Yeah. When you, <laughs> when you <laughs> I oh, say that has got a good sense of humor. It's like, yeah, yeah no, you, baby, you must tie the lever and actually do it. <laughs> some of the the things I, I was saying, I was saying to her um, the other day that uh, it's strange that some of the videos that I do on TikTok, especially, yeah. are inspired in my view by the Holy Spirit. So yeah. the Holy Spirit would like talk about cheating. <laughs> then you talk about cheating, right? And they fetch you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and it's quiet. I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit. So where are you now? Um, in where this are you mix? now in this mess? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's as if it just leaves you there. So yeah. um, like that video about cheating. Yeah, I I had to do it, and mm. I had a lot of guys fetching me on some. Yeah, but when I tell by you, you're just you know. Um, you are taking a lot of men, and that's how you're gaining a lot of you. Popularity comes from there, that yeah. you, are, you are taking men. I'm like, no, I am a man, mm. and I want to talk to men. You mm. understand? Uh, I want to I wanna speak to men in my voice as yeah. Majid. I understand what we're going through as a Majid. I understand about sexual urges. Mm. You know, I, I know what sexual urges are. Mm. And and Jong Majid, who is in the public health, in the public space, um, you know, I, I do get Aban Bispazane hitting on me mm. most most of the time. They're yeah. like, yeah, what's up, yo? I can be the second <laughs> wife. I'm like, no, sorry, I don't do his table. Like, mm. okay, I can be the side. I'm like, no, I don't do side dicks. <laughs> yeah. so, you know, dishes either. Yeah. But it's 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 those things they happen all the time yeah. you know they happen all the time so yeah uh, you just have to tie the lever and talk. You have to tie the lever. You know, I was actually <laughs> thinking about it this... <laughs> I was thinking about it this morning that, you know, the one twisted thing about us women mm. is that when we see a good guy, not all of us, now, don't crucify me, but you can if you want. Um, I'll come for you. Yeah, no, the, me, me, I'm <laughs> always the time. They the fetch you twice on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, twice on a you, weekend. <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, like me, they have me, you know? Um, I was actually thinking about it that when we see a good guy, yes. you know, because like I said to you when I first saw you there at the SABC mm. is that, you know, you inspire me with your mm. wife. The, the funny thing, the twisted thing about us women is that when we see a good guy, we're not inspired enough to say, I want something that is similar to that for myself. I we say, that. I want that. I want that man. I want that man. Not not something which is like that. Because, not a copy. Because somehow, somehow we believe that they don't exist, you know. And one of the reasons why for me it was so important for us to come and sit here is because I feel like in as much as we are both amplifying our voices and mm. I've heard you speaking in so many times, um, I needed you to sit here. Mm. So that all these women who are hopeless and are just, you know, holding on for whatever, they need to understand that this thing is a choice. You you choosing to stay in a situation like that, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean... Because what we usually tell each other is that, listen, it rains everywhere. Mm. Yes. It rains everywhere. Yeah. So if somebody says it rains everywhere, what, what they're saying to you is that literally you need to sit in that position where you're in, even though it's painful for you. And here's my... I want you to tell me what you think about my thought about cheating, mm. right? Um, I believe that I'm going to, I'm going to use the Christian background. Like guys, I know I'm a rebel and everything, but all I know, <laughs> don't <laughs> judge me. <laughs> you are judged. Don't judge me when I, <laughs> you don't know what I've been through. Don't judge exactly. me. <laughs> all I know guys is Christianity. Yes. You understand? And so the one thing that I know, you know, from my upbringing from the background the christian background that i have i know that in most cases people get married because they want to have sex as much as they can yes, you know because that yes mm. because um then it's legal then it's biblical then mm. it's you know they're doing things by the book mm. but also the one thing that a lot of people miss is the fact that this issue of of lust which then leads to cheating mm. is deeper than you just saying i found a kim kardashian mm. i'm going to marry a kim kardashian mm. then i'm going to keep her for the rest of my life mm. i'm not going to cheat on her you know um when you have that thing regardless of who you have in your mm. life you are never going to be satisfied so the problem here is not 
all men cheat because mm. that's what you will hear all the time. And also some guys will say that because guys will say that because they want to convince the women that they're with to stick around for their nonsense. Mm. Women who have stuck around for cheating will say that because they Justify. want... Justify. Yeah, to say, listen, I'm staying here because all men do it. But for me, I feel like it's deeper than... Um, just people cheating because all men cheat. It's it's more about lust, right? And when you have lust, you have a void in you and nothing satisfies you ever again, right? So meaning that the more you 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 have a wife, you thought that when you have this wife, then you're gonna, you know, stay faithful to her. But then when that thing now kicks, that demon mm -hmm. now rises up, ne? you need to now go get somebody who's better than her because there's something on the inside of you that's, you're not, you're not getting fulfilled. You understand what I mean? So for me, I feel like we take it very lightly and say all men do it. And mm -hmm. sometimes men influence each other to do it, yes. meaning that now, even when you don't want to do it, it's not your thing, you don't believe in that, then that demon of lust must be mm. instilled in you because you're not cool if you do it, if yeah. you don't do it. It's more like it's more like it's a societal expectation, this yes. and the other. Yeah. It's I love how you brought it, you know, and how you actually build it from Inda by Christianity because mm -hmm. I think a lot has to be said, um, um, you know, in, in, in our community as Christians, especially when it comes to Inda Bazota and love, sex mm. and marriage. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the reason why I actually become, um, you know, very radical and talk about I, I would stand on the pulpit and talk about sex yeah right up you mm. know it's simply because number one I mean I'm a clinician I'm you know I'm qualified to do so but again I just want to really you know challenge the status quo yeah um and <laughs> it's quite an interesting one I, I find it fascinating Mina that a lot of people especially mm. um in the Christian fraternity um, we take Inda by ye, ye last uh, very light, yeah. you know. Um, and let me just say this. Marriage does not cure lust. Sure. It doesn't. Exactly. Marriage, marriage. if you are lustful, marriage amplifies lust. Yo. It, it does. Yeah. Because the, the thing about lust is that it's something that you need to pay attention to. You know, it's a void, as you have said. Yeah. And, and, and unless you deal with it, mm. uh, I mean, we can talk, we can... <laughs> We can go deep and talk about why some men who are married to a Christian actually mm. prefer to masturbate instead of actually, you know, yeah. be sexually engaged with their partners, with mm. their wives. Because of Indabaye lust. Because yeah. marriage does not cure lust. You understand? You get married as a brother because you're feeling like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm feeling hot now. Mm. You're getting married to this woman. You, are, you have not found yourself as a mm. man. Uh, you don't know what is that you want. And then you start having sex and engaging with this woman. And then you realize three months down the line, you go to, ah, a son. We're a not son. compatible in this way or the other. And that's where then the this thing of you just want to go outside and actually mm. do it there. Right? Um, and, and that's the reason why David says, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Mm -hmm. That's what David says in the Bible. Bible. Yeah. It says, I've made a covenant with my eyes to never in my life look at a woman with lustful eyes, sure. right? So, which means as much as we are not immune to mm. last yeah. Lisa, or for whatever reason, I mean, we can talk about the biology and talk about the chemistry and talk about how testosterone mm. contributes for us to having, you know, high sex drive, this, that, and the other. Mm. But at the same time, and at the end of the day, it is our choice as men to sure. actually say it ends here, mm. you know? It's not that when we're talking about being faithful in Jungomjida as a married man, is that we don't think that there's other beautiful women out there, sure. right? Look, I am married to a beautiful woman. Sure. My woman is sexy. I'm telling you. I yeah, am. I mean, I mean, I've got receipts. <laughs> <laughs> Google her. She yes. is pretty, you mm. understand? But it's not that, and that alone does not necessarily mean that they are not prettier women sure. out there. There are no uh, sexier women out there, whatever yeah. the case. There are no much more beautiful women mm. out there. There are. But you made a, co a, a covenant with your eyes in Jungum Chita and say, mm. I'm choosing, I'm choosing. I often say that I choose my wife every day. Yeah. El Gadoch. Mm. Every morning I wake up, I'm like, I'm choosing your baby today. Sure. How can I love you better than yesterday? Mm. Right? It's a choice that you make. That's why David says, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Mm. Right? So last has to be dealt with and we need to address it because mm. Ikona, Sure. You know, Madam Speaker, a lot of men are mm. suffering from me last. You understand? And we want to justify it and say it's a normal thing to have. Everybody has it. It's testosterone pumping through my veins, this, yeah. that, and the other. You know, if there are men who are married and can live a holy li a life and a righteous life and love their wives and choose their wives and mm. not cheat on their wives, mm. if there are men who can do that, you know, and be grounded in the Lord and be grounded in Christ, mm. now we're as umjida, you can do it. Mm. You understand? Um, so we need not to normalize in that by cheating. Yeah. We cannot afford to yeah. even normalize 
normalizing that by last. Mm. Or would you know I was consumed by it. And that's why, you know, Apostle Paul talks about beating my flesh, you yeah. know, on a daily basis. Yeah. Because Inyama is a problem. This flesh is mm. a problem. You know, mm. we go out there, we attend events, we, we see women, and some of them, they actually, some, some, they have no shame whatsoever, yeah, zero. Yeah. They slide into your DMs with nudes. Just ha. like that. Yeah, and say, men of God, we just wanted to <laughs> offer ourselves <laughs> as a living sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> naked I came, naked I shall go. You understand? <sighs> you you do get such things, yeah. but uh, I think as Umjita, then you constantly, on a daily basis, mm. um, you know, the Bible says he who finds a, a, a woman, a wife finds a good, good thing, thing yeah. and obtains favor from the Lord, mm. right? As Umjita often say that as a married man, mm. I have received a lot from marrying my wife. You know, she gets a husband, a good husband, you know. Mm. Uh, she gets the surname and stuff like that. Mm. But I, I find a good thing yeah. to start with. I obtain favor from Ooh. God mm. just because I married to this wonderful woman. Mm. You understand? Mm. So should things go south, I have got more to lose than her. You understand? Because now I'm losing I'm losing a good thing sure. that comes from God. Mm. I am losing the favor that comes with me being with this woman. Yes. So that's the reason why I'm like, I, I can't afford to, I, I need to keep this woman because I am what I am. Some of the things that people see me today, mm. you, you, you see this confidence? Mm. Me standing here and speaking mm. this big English. Mm. It's not because I went to Crawford. <laughs> no, I went to Siazama High School somewhere mm. there mm. in the locations. But I've got a woman that looks at me and says, baby, you can do it. Yeah. Let's pray with you. Sure. Every day, my, my, my daughter and my wife, they, they've got these prayers that they do. Mm. And my, my wife would say to my daughter, what do you want us to pray for? She's true. Mm. She's like, pray for daddy. And then they pray for daddy. Mm. So I know, I'm at work or I'm here, you know, uh, wherever I am, yeah. I've got my wife and daughter that I'm praying for. So I've got a lot to lose yeah. should things go south. So we can't afford it. That was my last to cost us this much. You know, uh, what you shared right now is so deep because mm. I feel like a lot of men, you know, don't realize what is at stake. Eh. And when they don't realize what it what is at stake, they end up because remember in most cases we women because we are the ones who love marriage so much yes and we are the ones who get Jolo shows us flames yeah you know but we are the ones who feel like <laughs> when we have the ring we have achieved you yes. know and we are the ones who usually suffer when the things are not going well mm. but um, I feel like the fact that I I have a friend of mine oh she's gonna kill me Chomi uh, Sorine the husband <laughs> would always say. Do you know what that means? Yeah. Yes. Mm. And um, in most cases, when relationships end, you know, this is uh, there's no stats. This is just me and my two cents and my observation. Yeah. Don't crucify. Okay, crucify me. <laughs> fine. Fetch me. Yes, fetch me <laughs> if you want. But um, I've seen women succeeding so much mm. after a marriage has come to an end. Mm. And uh, with my own personal experience, I would say it's because I've always wanted to hide under somebody or behind somebody. Mm. And in as much as we're in good terms with the guy and everything, but I can see that really the good thing that you are talking about, mm. I took it with. Yeah, Giri, you came with it, so now it's gone. <laughs> so what is the importance of people understanding what they have, you know, because I mean... I don't even know how we're going to preach this gospel so that men can understand that when they say you found favor and a good thing, and we're not saying you should settle for, because women are also capable of being abusive. Oh, trust of course, me, of course. You know, yes. um, once you see that this is a good thing and the favor that comes with it, good, with, with this good thing, how do you remind yourself on a daily to embrace it? Because when Majita now are sitting in a corner, it's quick. They're quick to forget all of that. How do you, how do you, how do you keep? Look, it's 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 really. I think it starts with the realization that number one, you've got a good thing, mm. uh, and I think Amaji or a lot of people mistreat their partners simply because they have not really got to, gotten to realize mm. that they've got a good thing going on. Yeah, you know. And then, so that, that's why I think it's, I think it's Dr. Mas Mandru, the late Dr. Mas Mandru says, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Mm. So it's easy for you to abuse something that you do not know its purpose. Mm. And I think, you know, just to add on to, on to that thought, when value is not known, abuse is inevitable. You understand? So if you don't know the value of the thing that you have, it's easy for you just to treat it anyhow and even say, you know, it's such, such things, yeah. you know, the audacity to True. say that. Mm. And you'd find good if you continue to call this woman, so it starts with realizing that number one, I've got a good thing. Yeah. Right? You realize that. 
and 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 then number two, you treat it well, mm. you know, um, and 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 love it well, you know. If you <laughs> look, um, I I like saying that women are not as complex as we make them to be, yeah. right? Um, in fact, I often say that they don't need to be fully understood. Just love them. Mm. I don't know why my wife loves sushi. Mm. I have no idea. I, I like it doesn't taste nice. <laughs> it's funny. But she she becomes happy when yeah. I buy a sushi. So now whenever I go to the shop, I know that I can get a sushi. She's going to be the happiest. I don't know why she loves roses. Mm -hmm. They die. You know, in the house. And I'm like, that's that's a lot of money. <laughs> I could have bought in Como with yes. this money. <laughs> you know. Um yeah. but 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 I, I don't understand some of the things, but mm. I've 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 made a covenant myself to actually uh, love her mm. and not even want to understand it. So to a uh, especially men, mm. you know, understand that you've got a good thing. Mm. And, and treat it well. And the problem is that we, 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 we live in a culture where there's so many options. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And, and what I have picked up and what I've realized is that people who think they've got options, when they are outside that marriage or that covenant, mm -hmm. they realize yeah. with, ah, man, yeah. hey, it's rough out there. The there's pool. nothing on the streets. Yeah, no, the streets <laughs> are dark here, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, because you're thinking it's glittering, La Panga yeah. Pang. You understand? Yeah. I read a post this morning where somebody says, the the, the woman that you think is better than your wife, mm. she is better because she's not staying with you in the house. Yeah. The minute she stays with you, you realize, good, uh, uh, my wife is actually the better mm. thing. So um, realize that you've got a good thing that God has blessed you with. Appreciate yeah. and love. You know, and the Bible says, Tina Amajita, we need to love our women as Christ loves the church. Yeah. And that's quite deep mm. because you look at the church, the body of Christ, mm. the church, mm. troublesome. Sure. The, the church cries a lot. Sure. You understand that the church has got its own issues, but mm. we need, we ought to love. And I really believe, and as a Christian man, mm. that it takes unkulunkul, it takes God for me to know how to love my wife correctly. Mm. I miss it most of the time, mm. you know, but, um, you know, unkulunkul is the one that says, this is the one I've created. I know her heart. Do this, that, and the other. Yeah. Right? So, Another thing that can make a majita to actually really appreciate the good thing that they have mm. is for them to have a, a relationship with God. Sure. And then God will reveal it to them to say, listen, once this woman leaves, sure. I, I know men who are very wealthy mm. and they will tell you that I am what I am because of the prayers of this one mm. woman that I'm married. Mm. Once this woman leaves, mm. these prayers, I mean, there's times when I get so tired, you know, uh, Madam Speaker, that mm. I can't even pray. Sure. But I know that my wife prays for me. Yeah. You understand? Imagine losing that. Then sure. it means I have just like you're, you're for the dogs <laughs> I am a mess, you yeah. know. You know? Uh, there's times when I am really despondent and I don't know what to do with myself. I don't know what, and my wife picks me up. Mm. You understand? That's a good thing. Yeah. That's something rare that you don't just find on the streets, La mm. So to I think a message to Amachita, even to women, that mm. realize that you've got a good thing. Sure. And to be honest, there's nothing on the streets. Sure, there's whoa, one? Yes, why? <laughs> there is nothing on those streets. Nothing. But with him saying that, he's not saying that if you're staying in an abusive situation, you should stick around because there's nothing, nothing uh, on no, the streets. No. If, if if the one that you're with is not the one that there is something on the streets, but yeah. otherwise, in Jane, 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 I know you need to fix your things. Um, I don't want to forget that we are partnering with Hydro Quench. Uh, big, a big shout out to them because they're sponsoring us for... Our episodes, ne? yes, the water that we are drinking now as we are talking. Ne? Yeah, sure, man, it's so nice. I'm like, this one, uh, this one, it's sponsored. <laughs> yeah, ne? yeah, it's sponsored by Hydro Quench. And also, as you can see in Dimtlene, it's Itu Hair Studios who's sponsoring us. And also, my beautiful clothes, we are being sponsored by Crown Lioness. And this beautiful studio, Sand Studios, ah, shout out today. Today, you're not even laughing on the mic, eh? <laughs> no, I'm touched. You're touched, ne? Yeah, what he's saying, yeah. It's touching you, ne? Too much. No, <laughs> let, let it touch. Um, you know, uh, Temba, ne? I know that in most cases, it's us women who cry a lot. You mm. know, we are the loudest mouths of them all when we exit relationships that didn't work out and whatnot. But I know that there are men who are also struggling in the hands of women. Yes. You, you say that you found a good thing. You found favor from the Lord. But then your life turns south. Have you ever had an encounter with somebody who's been through something like that, and they are trying, you know, to 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 have a relationship with God and speak to God and invite God and everything, but the woman is just for the streets. A lot, actually. Mm. It's it's quite it's quite sad uh, what Amachita going through Langa mm. and um, and it's probably one of the reasons why that that makes me appreciate my wife. Sure, you know, 
Um, because I know what's happening out there. Yeah. I, I, I hear Amachita crying. You understand? Mm. The simplest things that I would say my wife does, Amachita Manning would text me and say, yo, Mona, I wish my woman can do this. Sure. Right? So I, I know that they, they, they're going through the most. Mm. Um, a couple of months ago, I gave a talk to men, a group of men, and I entitled it Four Reasons Why You Must Cry. Mm. Generally, my topics are just very catchy and funny and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Quite, you know, unorthodox. I was yeah. like, four reasons why you must cry as mm -hmm. a man. They said they, they laughed hard, you know. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, they were like, yeah, as well, mm -hmm. we need to cry. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that, that is towards your point to say, as women, it's easy for you guys to cry and talk about it and actually go out there, yeah. you know, and because the Bible says you guys are the weaker vessels, go mm. out there and cry about the relationships. Mm. But in most cases, Samachita, they suffer alone, yeah. right? You see it in their behavior. You see it in how they don't want to be at home. You mm. see it in why I once did a video about why men must not spend too much time outside, sure. um, you know, of the house. They must spend time in their in their families. I got a lot of inboxes from Mama Chita mm. that says, I would love to spend time with my family, mm. but I've got a very lousy and a very noisy wife in the yeah. house. And that's the Bible. That's why the Bible says it's better for a man to go and sleep on top of the roof mm. Mm? Yeah? Mm. than to stay with a a a, a, a quarrelsome woman sure. in the house, yeah. right? And we don't want to talk about these scriptures mm. because the minute we mention them, then we get fetched to yeah. say, yeah, when I tell you, you want men to cheat mm -hmm. in peace. I'm mm -hmm. like, no, <laughs> you know, you, you just don't have to be a quarrelsome person yeah. in the house. So I have heard encounters Namaji Damaji are saying to me, and which is a privilege, a rare privilege on my end because I'm a child, they hardly open up yeah. but they would open up about their challenges in the house to mm. say listen uh, I had a counseling I think about two weeks ago you know Umjita would say listen um, uh, it's not working mm. I love this woman I'm doing everything that is expected I think is expected of me I am providing in this mm. house you know Machita, when you give a woman a good home uh, you provide, you cover the things. You are a good man. You mm. are not on the streets. You don't, you're not out there in Amachita drinking all the time. Mm. You're actually in the house when I go to church on Sunday and this woman just turns out to be a monster in the mm. house. She wants to go out with her friends. You know, she wants to gallivant around and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's so shocking because we are not taught Tina Banbeslisa how to deal with such things. Yeah. A, a woman is taught because a woman that's why Banyala Manshata. Mm. You're taught how to be a wife in yeah. the house, right? Mm. Tina Machita, we really figure it out Nobody ourselves cares. and stuff mm. like that. But it's strange when things are turned around when yeah. this person whom you think have received sufficient counseling, you know, and wisdom and and and, and teachings about mm -hmm. how to be a good wife turns out to be something different. So I've heard it one too many times, Namachita. And uh, it's strange that uh, you'd find men that still want to fight for the relationship. Yeah. Um, we think of men as people that just want to quit mm. and leave. Mm. Um, but I think because of our nature to analyze things and, and calculate things, sometimes you do get men if not most of the time, that really calculates what's at stake when mm. they leave, especially the good ones that yeah. are treating the woman right. Yeah. So they want to still try and save the marriage, yeah. you know, um, and still try. And, and, and unfortunately, when they cry out about the relationships, it's hard for them, yeah. for us to believe them. Yeah. The society does not believe a man. Who's, mm. It seems like society is not taught to accept a vulnerable yes. man. Yes. We don't know how to We see it as, weak, as weakness. Vulnerability mm. for a man to a man is equated with Oguba weak. You are mm. weak or you are a simp or whatever the case mm. might be. There's words that are thrown around Guban sure. Beslisa. And no wonder why most men are not in the uh, mental institutions that are in the grave. Sure. Men kill themselves. Mm. Men die. You know, yeah. there was a stat that was released, I think, about two years ago, and it, they said in South Africa there was about, I think, about 13,000 deaths, you know, through suicide and stuff mm. like that. And of those 13,000, 10,000 of those, if not more, were men. Sure. Yeah. Sure. King. You mm. understand? So it's shocking how the society does not really know how to deal with the vulnerable men. So I've heard a number of times Amachita saying, hey, Mona, I want this thing to work. Yeah. I want to save my marriage. But Ziakala, mm. you, you know, um, and I think that's the reason why Uncle Uncle has opened up such platforms yeah. for us. And that's the reason why you are on my neck about a podcast and yes. stuff like that. So that <laughs> we can address such issues. I actually wanted to get to that after <laughs> this. <laughs> oh, don't expose my sins. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. because God really wants to um, get to speak to a, a man, you mm. know, whether it's a boy child and... Uh, and, and a broken man because mm. men are broken. Yeah. 
Yo, you know, um, the most heartbreaking thing about what you're saying right now is I feel like I do my part, right? Mm -hmm. Because I organize women's conferences. Like I'm saying, I'm mentioning the sponsors or sponsors for mm -hmm. the women's conferences. I organize camps, you know. I call them loving yourself back to life because in most cases, women, it takes them hitting rock bottom mm. and then it's an emergency now for them to come back. Yes. Right? So I do camps, weekend camps, um, and I do all these events. You know, on Women's Month, I'm not even in the house. The whole month, I'm up and down yeah. speaking to women. But to a certain degree, I feel like it will be so pointless for me to speak to women and equip them and get all the experts to come in and speak, yet they have to go home to men who are broken, men who are not as equipped as they are. My desire, ne, that's, I think that's one of the reasons why I love your work mm. and I'm really trying my level best to just, you know, be on your <laughs> neck and say, listen, let's do, do on the other side what I'm yes. doing on the other side yes. because it is so pointless for women to, you know, have these goosebumps. We cry in the sessions. We comfort one another. They still have to go back home to men who are bruised, who don't speak. By the way, I, I mean, I, I would like to commend you for the amazing work you do. Thank you. You so are you are doing the most. Thank you. you. Know? And and I really believe that you're one of the voices that God is amplifying in this generation. You know, when Mordecai in the Bible says to Esther, "You have been raised for such a time as this." Yeah. That's that's exactly what's happening with you. And 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 that it's a beautiful you know thing that you're doing. So kudos to that. Thank um, you so much. And and I think. Yeah, the the time is now. Mm. Uh, for for the longest of time, I've been I've been I've been really, you know, dragging my feet, um, and and in fact, funny story. How I joined, I told you when we were at SBC that mm -hmm. what made me to actually take TikTok serious is my wife. Mm. Um, my wife said to me, "Really, you need to take this TikTok thing serious." And and I just gave it a thought, mm. and and God helped me not to overthink it. I, that's why my videos are in the car. Yeah. I'm not I'm not wearing a suit. Mm. I'm not trying to talk proper English. I'm yeah. not trying to impress you. Yeah. I just want to talk about the issues that you are dealing with in the house. Mm -hmm. Right? So, um, and, and the reason for that probing is because there is a need. Mm. Um, honestly, there is a need. It's, it's hard to... <sighs> men are broken. Mm. I have sat in... Meetings I have set in coffee chats with Amajita. Amajita, they are really broken. And mm. God has to raise a voice. And I remember this other time, and I think I shared this thing with you, to say I was sitting this other time, quite going through the most uh, in my house, and I wanted to watch a YouTube channel or a podcast, you yeah. know, South African-based, by a man, for a man, that talks to issues of men. I mean, I respect all the sisters that are yeah. in the space yeah. that talks about mental health and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But I want to hear mental health from a man's perspective, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it actually shows up differently. Mm -hmm. It might affect us more or less the same, but we, we react to it differently. Yeah. I want to hear a man talk about marriage mm -hmm. from a man's perspective, uh, talk about issues of sex, because women, you guys talk about all of these things, yeah, talk about vaginas and vulva. <laughs> and talk about gyno gods. We, we, we talk about everything. <laughs> you know, no limits. But hard, we hardly talk about such yeah. things as men. And one of the things that I have seen is when I get to be invited to actually speak to men, which is one of the things I love the most, mm. um, I, I love the, re the response from Oven Bislis because the approach is different. Yeah. The approach is not judgmental. Yeah. The approach says it's a safe space. Let's have a conversation. One of the things that God has blessed me with is for me to deliver mm. things with a dash of humor. Sure. Um, you know, um, of course, now I'm very serious because Madam Speaker vibes. <laughs> well, serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my things. You know, you have no serious. idea. <laughs> <laughs> but but when I'm in a space in a majida, mm. um, I I really do it with a dash of humor. I could talk about things like mental health, yeah. and they would be laughing, mm. but. It, uh, it gets the message across. I could mm. sit in a room and talk about erectile dysfunction, yeah. which affects about more than seven in ten men. Mm. You know, uh, um, nobody's talking about that. Oh no, no one is talking. About Amachita, they, mm. we lie. You say, ah, mm. oh, so five rounds. Yes. Uh, no, <laughs> five rounds. Yes. <laughs> TikTok. You know, yeah. uh, we sit and we talk and we lie to each other, mm. Miss Lisa. But I mean, if you read the stats and you check, you know, I, I mean, seven in ten men suffer when it comes to issues of sexual performance and mm. you know erectile dysfunctions seven in ten sure. what that means is that you take ten men and put them in one room mm. more than seven of them have got issues sure and that time we are all lying 
Yeah. That time we were talking about how, you know, we are just stallions and yes. stuff like that. If you but ask every single one of them, they'd be like, nah, listen, I'm uh, Me, I break the bed. <laughs> me, I, I break bags. <laughs> lies and lies yeah. and lies. But to, to answer your question, I think it's about time. Yeah. And um, I, I did a TikTok video when I was telling people that my wife bought me a, a thingy, um, a field bar. Mm. But the reason why she bought it, she said to me, baby, I think in 2024, you'd be doing a lot of camps and a lot of travelings and you'd be meeting up a Majid. Mm. So you actually need a, uh, something to, you know, drink your cold drink and yeah. an energy drink and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so again, she, she has seen the vision. She's yes. been to the mountaintop. Yes. Um, and I think it's about time. Uh, mm. For the longest of time, I think I've been scared. Yeah. to actually start something like that, yeah. um, have a young prayer, have sessions. In fact, I get a lot of women requesting me yeah. to say, Babunduli, can't you just have a young, small young conference somewhere mm. under the tree? We will bring our husbands. <laughs> we will bribe them to be yeah. there. You understand? And uh, that's a probing. Mm. And I think it's a probing from the Holy Spirit as well to say sure. we need to do something of, the, of that sort. So my prayer right now, to be honest with you, is so that God can position me very well. And, and and bring me people of your caliber mm. that can channel me in the right spaces. Yeah, exactly. But I was I about am to get that there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you have know the plan. From here, when you live here, you, born, you are sorted. Okay, okay, you say to me, she's that girl. I'm like, where did you get the video from? He's like, I am that girl. I'm like, okay, that girl, you are hired. <laughs> no, listen, let me tell you something. Ne? Um, <laughs> Earlier on, before we, we, we said, um, mm. we we're meeting with somebody else with Kanye because we're trying to uh, get our foundation up and running and everything. Yes. And God just aligned us with the right person who will just help us with everything that we need. And we always talk about how, because our visions align so much, yes. it doesn't even feel like a job. Mm. And I can, tell you th I can tell you now that this is the alignment that was pending. Is that, you see that field bar? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Kanye's going to make sure. Is the, is no, the it's definitely going to No, you needed a feel bar and also Kanye. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we, we're really praying to Unkulungulu to, to, to make it happen. The Bible says those who know their God shall carry out mighty exploits. Yeah. And I think it's about time for, for us to, to stand up. The Bible says the world is waiting eagerly for sons of men to be revealed. Yeah. And I think this is a revelation time for, yeah. for God to use us the best way he can. Yeah. Uh, and I'm ready, man. You know, my prayer for 2024 i'm like just god let's do it that's why some of the videos are just quite you know catchy and stuff like mm. that and they get me into trouble yeah uh because i i don't overthink it now mm -hmm. I, I don't want to do it for likes and yeah. and and shares and stuff mm. i want to do it for the glory of god and i want to yeah. do it so that it can reach out to a man there is a man somewhere there yeah. that needs to know that they are worth it there's yeah. a man somewhere there that needs to know that they can change and usually become a better man mm. Um, you know, we, we, there's, 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 there's a man that has just been quiet for some, for such a long time yeah. and they need to be quite vocal at this point in time. And yeah, it's, sure. it's, it's, it's time. Yo, this makes me so happy because then I know that, um, the amount of work that we're going to be doing on our side, it's not in vain because if women are heathing, men are heathing, I mean, it's a win-win yes. for our generation. You know, it's a win-win yes. because if the work is being done on both sides, listen, you have all our support. If it means that we have to wear masks and pretend like we are <laughs> men so that we can get the job done and help you, uh, we will definitely do that. But yeah, yo, this is, can you believe that it's been an hour already? Has it been? It's been an hour. Jeez, it just feels like 15 <laughs> minutes, I tell it's, you. It's been an hour. Um, and unfortunately, because it's been an hour, that means that we've come to the Our end. Time Our time is up. <laughs> so, but then in, in, in closing, um, man, speak to my people. What are your parting words? Look, my, my, I think it's important for me to say there is no situation that God can't fix. And Uncle Uncle, I love Uncle Uncle. Mm. Um, because God, when milk is spilled on the floor, God does not actually just wipe it. Mm. God can actually put it back together into the container. Mm. And there's a lot of people, I love the story of Humpty Dumpty, mm. where he was broken into many pieces. And I love the song of Bibu Winans, where he says, the reason why he could not be put together is because they were calling on the wrong king. Sure. Um, you know, because he knows a king that can put everyone together, yeah. put together. Yeah. I have seen men that are broken and God puts them together. Um, I really believe that there is there is hope for men. Mm. There is a bomb in Gilead. Mm. Uh, and I really believe that Unkulunkulu can actually change the narrative for this generation. Yeah. He's raising a lot of men who are prayerful. 
and uh, a lot of men who are vocal, you understand, is raising a generation of dads yeah. and husbands who are loving and a vocal and a, you know, mm. God is doing something about it. So yeah. I just want to say to the broken one, there is healing. You know, you can't just give up on yourself. There is healing to Amajid mm. and to men as well. If you need to reach out, mm. hey, Muna, I can be the brother that you are looking for. Yeah. You understand? Um, and to the ladies, keep praying for your sons mm. because it's easy to raise, you know, um, very powerful and strong boys than to heal broken men. Sure. You know? Deep. So keep praying for your sons. Mm. Um, to, to Amajid out there, if you've got a son, be a present father. Mm. I am who I am today because I had a present father. Yeah. But what's interesting about my dad is that he had an absent father. Yeah. You understand? Mm. But so he made a choice to be present in my life. Mm. And I have made a, co a covenant myself to say I'm going to continue yeah. being present. So to Amajid, be present. Um, there's hope. Mm. Not all is lost. Yeah. Not all is lost. Amen. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you, my brother, for joining me today. Listen, this has been such a... Like, the fact that I get to sit here first before you people watch this, <laughs> <laughs> what a luxury. You know, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for joining in. And a big shout-out once more to our sponsors, Hydro Quench, to our sponsors, Crown Lioness, to our sponsors, E2 Hair Studio, Scent Studios. Listen, all of you are from God. Thank you so much. God bless you.